everyone, and welcome to our first ZAP webinar of 2024. My name is Justine Chappell. I'm the Communications and Marketing Manager for ZAP. In today's webinar, I'm going to provide an in-depth look at the jury administration process. So if you're new to ZAP, this will give you a look at the entire process from start to finish. And if you're not new to ZAP, but maybe you're looking for some best practices or tips for how to best organize your applicants during this time, I've got those sprinkled in as well. Let's just dive right in because this might be a long webinar because it goes through the entire jury process. Um, so as you can see, we've got the admin login screen, or I've already logged in as an administrator to Zap here. And I'm going to start with a little prep before we get to the jury side. Um, so let's just pull up and set the scene of our event. So we've got this demo event here. Today we'll be looking at the applications for, we've got 16 demo applications for you here. A lot of this is going to apply for applications for many more applications because I'm assuming you get more than 16 that apply to your event. Um, but that's what we've got here. And so the first thing you'll wanna do when you get into Zap and you're ready to start jurying, your application deadline has passed and all the artists have entered their work, um, you, will most likely want to review the applications just to make sure they're ready to go before the jury. This is kind of an optional step and, you know, depending on how much time you have, you may not be able to do this, but in case this is a process of yours, I just wanted to um, show what you can do here. So as you know, to review the applications, you can click on the status or you can click to view all the applications and you'll be brought to the events management table. This gives you the list of applications and various columns and fields, which we'll touch on a little bit later um, for each application. To view the application, you will click on the ID number and that will take you to the application page where you can see all of the artist's information, um, the status and actions area, the questions and the answers to your questions from the application, their artwork and their booth shot if you re require one, the payments they made, emails you might have sent to them, um, and any related apps. So this is the application page, and this is what you can review if you need to review for, you know, maybe eligibility, making sure that they're in the right category. You can update the category if you need, if you see that their artwork isn't matching. Some folks have strict rules on what is considered certain categories, um, so you'll just need to update that as you see fit. Once you review the application and you you know want to set that aside so you know and can keep track of who has or what applications have been reviewed, you can click on um, the status change here and just I recommend putting it in the reviewed status and clicking change. Once you do that, you can scroll to the bottom, click next application, and continue your review from there. So, however you prefer to review your applications or what you're looking at. Using that review status can be really helpful so that you can keep track. Let's go back to events management. If I you know, were to walk away and come back, I can see I've reviewed two and I still have 14 in the received status. Artists can't see if you've changed their status from received to reviewed. So you can do this as applications are coming in. You can do this all in one batch after the application deadline, um, whatever is best for you. Um, I just recommend you know, giving yourself enough time to organize things before your jury starts so that you're best prepared going into that process. When you are done, actually, before I get to the next step, I will say that there's other statuses that can help you during your review if you need artists to make any changes. So don't forget the incomplete status. If you put an application in this status, the artist can make modifications to their applications or make any unnecessary updates before the application deadline. So that's what the incomplete status is used for, is for artists to make changes before the deadline. If they need to make changes after the deadline, maybe you're reviewing them and you really need them to update something, um, you can put them in the exception status. That will give them the ability to make modifications to their application after the deadline. So. Um, those are the differences between those two, and those can be really helpful if, you know, you do allow artists to go in and um, fix something or make sure that they have the requirements um, just to give everyone the best shot in the jury. Of course, that's up to your discretion if you choose to allow that kind of thing. 
So um, I mentioned this a little bit before, but um, one tip that's come up recently is um, folks might have, um, you know, if you run an event that allows multiple applications per artist, maybe an artist can apply multiple times to have either different medium categories or to have a different set of body of work to present to the jury. Um, if you do that, you know that there is the related apps column. And let me find one that has one in here. This application will track, here's one. This application, um, this artist, um, it's all tracked by the username of the artist account. So Alicia Smith here applied to this demo event once, and then she applied again with a separate application. And so Zap will tell you if they have a different application. Um, so I just wanted to provide a tip here that in the events management section, when you are pulling up the event man events management table, don't forget there is on the right-hand side, the table editor. If you click on table editor, this gives you a lot of different fields that you have the ability to change what you're seeing. So you can have up to eight fields display on the table at one time. So the one here that is gonna be helpful is related apps. So because I can only have eight, I might need to remove one of these. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, that's perfect. So once I click save on this, you'll see we have this related apps column. And so this just gives like a good at a glance view of, you know, which artists are, have a duplicate application. And this can help you if you need to, you know, decide how many true artists or unique artists you have. Um, so again, you know, if I were to look at this artist here, I can see that they have two applications and you can tell by the ID number here and here that those are different. Um, if you want to be able to quickly track and um, track your applicants, um, your duplicate applications as you go through the jury process, I do recommend if it's easy for you, you can create a tag for duplicate applications. And this just allows you to better sort for these kinds of folks. So I would create a tag here that says, you know, duplicate and add that there. Here's another one and I'll click duplicate. And I'll show you why this is necessary in a second. Let's just do this a second time or a third time. And so let's just say I do that for all of the artists' um, applications that have duplicate applications. What this tagging process allows me to do is go to the filter applicants by section and I can choose tags. And then under tags, I can choose that duplicate um, one, which I think I need to actually update my table first. And then I'll be able to tag, search by the duplicate tag. So this just allows me to sort by applications that are, you know, from duplicate app, you know, artists. And you can see here too, it'll also tell you, you know, how many unique artists you have. Um, some folks get into a process where they just need to quickly see if this artist has multiple applications. So the tag kind of helps you um, um, pay attention to that. All right. And then one of the final things I'll mention before we hop into the jury side is if you have um, folks that are exempt from the jury process, um, maybe these are folks that won in the past, so they get automatic entries, maybe they're board members, but they get, um, you know, they don't need to be shown to the jury because they are um, exempt from it. You will change the status of those applicants to exempt from jury, and this helps sort those folks as well. So I'll change the status here and click update at the bottom. And you'll see now we have those two in the exempt from jury status. Um, because only applications in the received status are shown to the jurors, exempt from jur jury helps you keep them separate. Now I know some folks do like to display the exempt from jury applications to the jurors, maybe ahead of time, maybe um, at a different point in the process. So um, if you want, what one tip I have is to first move everyone else to the reviewed status. So let's go to the reviewed status and click move all to there. If you missed that, what I did is I went to the bottom, move all applications to whichever status. So I put everyone else in reviewed and I have these two exempt from jury folks. So what I'm gonna do is move them all to received, click change. And now we have those exempt from jury folks in the received status. Then I can prompt my jurors that they are able to access the applications for 
those exempt folks and they can take a look at the artwork. They can take a look at it just to see, you know, what they look like either before, or maybe after the jury process, but they're all separate um, in the receive status. Let's say they went in and did that. Once they're done, I'll change them back to exempt from jury so that they don't show up in the jury process anymore. Then I'll make sure I move everyone back from the reviewed status to the received status because, again, the received status is where the artwork needs to be in order to be shown to the jurors. So that's just a little tip there for exempt from jury folks. And at this point, we are all set then to go in and um, score the entries or get our jury set up to score the entries. Um, so again, make sure everyone's in received, and then we'll go to the jury administration section. So the first thing you'll need to do as an administrator to conduct your jury is review the setup jury set, um, settings at the top of this page. And you'll want to adjust the settings for your preference or um, to get your jury started. So I'm going to go through each of these fields here to kind of give an overview of what they mean. The first thing you'll want to do when your jury is ready to go is change the current jury status to in progress. This will make it so that jurors will have access to the applications and that the jury is then um, says that it's in progress on the artist side and they can see that it's begun. The jury view is where you'll select the view that the jurors will have. Now we have two options here, monitor, full screen, and projection. Monitor is the um, most common use jury view for um, jurors that log in on their own computer and score the entries. Um, and then projection view was designed for following along with a projected jury um, and being able to score that way. They just kind of look different and have different um, views of the artwork, but I will show you each of them so you can essentially choose, no matter what your method is, choose whichever one works best for your jurors. So just a tip here is to consult with their jurors about which view they might want. You can show them what they look like ahead of time. And um, since the jury view will be the same for all jurors at the same time, you'll just have to decide on which one will be best for all of your jurors. You can also be open to switching the view if um, they end up preferring one over the other. So again, I'll show you what each of them look like when we get into the juror side. Next, we have scoring type. So again, you'll choose whichever one you're going to go with for your jury. Um, one through seven, yes, no, maybe, one through five, or one through ten. These options can be changed in between rounds. So if you do have multiple rounds of scoring where you further narrow down your applications, you can switch from maybe a more broad um, scoring, such as yes, no, maybe, where you know jurors are more focused on moving folks forward or um, eliminating them. And then maybe when you have further down the line, you have your round two or three, you want jurors to be a little bit more specific about the range of their scores. You can change it to a one through seven. You can also do that in the complete opposite thing I just um, described. So whichever one works for you. And you can also just have the same scoring type for multiple rounds. That's fine too. Whatever one you choose, just again, be um, specific with your jurors about what the scoring criteria is and what those numbers really mean to you, which brings me to the scoring type order. You can choose if the scoring is converted high to low in terms of, you know, one through seven, high to low or low to high. So just again, make sure jurors know which one is considered a high score and which one's considered a low score. Actually, low to high, I think is the one we'll go with here. Apps for, or um, sort artists by, this is um, something that the Zap team can help you change, but um, application ID number is the default here. And um, if you want to change that, we can also do it by random order or by last name. Apps per page, you can ignore this because it's kind of an outdated feature from a different jury option we had, so don't worry about that. The hide current stat artist status is an important setting, so you'll need to change this to yes when you're ready to start your scoring. Um, this means that the status will be hidden from the artist and they can't see whether or not they've been eliminated from the jury. So it kind of puts up a curtain 
so to speak, for your jury so that when artists are logging into Zap and looking at their status, they can't see if they've been eliminated prior to you notifying them if they've been invited or not invited. So change this to yes. The only exception I'll say here, and this is a tip for if you have a rolling jury, is that when you have a rolling jury, you'll want to keep your jury status in progress, but keep this as um, set to no, because this will allow artists to um, apply to your show and continue applying to your show while you have your rolling jury set up. So you would set up everything else similar for a rolling jury, but you'd say that set this status to no so that artists as you're jurying, you know, folks as they come in, artists on the their side can still apply to your show and it doesn't prohibit them from applying um, so that you can then consider their application when it comes in. Um, so the process for a rolling jury is, you know, pretty similar except for this status. So again, for this case, we'll set it to yes so that we can put up that curtain. On the right hand side, you'll have some permissions to show or not show certain things to the juror. So you can choose to show their body of work. I'm assuming you'll want to keep that active. Um, show artists' names. This is one where if it's supposed to be anonymous to jurors, um, keep it inactive so that the name will be hidden from the jurors. Show artist statement. You can choose whether or not you want to show that to them. Same thing with the sample description. This means the description of each individual artwork image. You can show or hide that. Art thumbnails, again, you'll wanna make sure you're you know, showing all if you want them to review the entire body of work, but you do have the option to remove all those artwork thumbnails or just keep it to one if you're just previewing it. And then again, image prices, you can show or hide that and I'll keep it as hidden by marking it inactive so that jurors can't see the price. That might be something that jurors want to see and you'll allow, so you'll set that to active if that's the case. Just make sure when you're updating these seven settings to always click save jury settings to make sure that's going. You'll see that now that we've changed it to in progress, it shows that we have round one in progress. And we have 14 applications being judged, meaning those are the 14 applications in the received status. And we have those two that are exempt. So that's the initial setup for the jury. The next step for making sure your jury is ready to go is to actually add the jurors to the show. There's two ways to do this. The first is by going to the jury admin portal and clicking add juror. Here you'll enter the username, password, and contact information for the juror that you're adding. Um, and there's a couple other steps you have to do for this. So let's just say I'm gonna add a username here and I'll just do, you know, a password and I'll make up an email just to show you. Um, and so when you add the juror and you put in the information, you'll wanna click add. Oh, I didn't actually do this right. There we go. Let's click add. And so we've added them to the list, but don't leave this page quite yet. Once you do this, you then have to attach their access to the correct event. So essentially you're creating the juror profile first and then you're assigning them to the event. So you'll see that, you know, once I did that, it gave me this new option here and I have to check this box, click save, and then they'll be added to the event um, and for the jury for that event. So if I go to jury administration, you'll see this is the account we just created and assigned. That's the first way of doing it. Um, the second way is if you already have a juror that has juried for you in the past or, you know, you know that they have an active jury account, you can go to the jurors tab of the jury up here and you'll find your list of all the juror accounts assigned to your organization. You can find the active list or you can click show disabled to show the list of any deactivated accounts for your organization. Maybe they um, juried for you long time ago and they had their account deactivated, they'll be able to, you'll be able to reactivate their account from here. Um, let's go back to the active list. To assign any of these jurors to your event for this year, you will go to edit next to one of their names 
and you'll see, you know, you'll probably have multiple events listed here, but again, you're just going to assign them to the event that you're currently jurying and you'll click save to do that. Just note that um, the jurors will log in with the same username and password that they logged in, you know, previously. So the username will be the same and whatever password either that they set up for themselves or that you set up for them at the time, this is a good update, you know, time shot to look at when it was last updated. Um, you can also reset the password for them here. So just make sure they're assigned to the event and click save. And again, when we get to the jury administration section, you'll see we have that juror saved to the event. The jurors will only have access to score your event if they are on this page right here. If they're not on this page in this section, you know that they haven't been assigned to your event. So you'll want to go check that list and make sure that there that box is checked. So that's how you add jurors to your account. Um, another tip that I have here is to create or assign a juror account for yourself. So as the administrator of the jury, you might want to take a look at what the juror portal looks like to be able to provide instructions to your jurors or just see what it looks like from their end. Or maybe you want to, you're leading um, a jury on a Zoom meeting and you want to be able to project the jury um, on or share the screen of the jury side. Or maybe you are projecting um, a monitor version of the um, jury scoring and you can have your own juror account. You don't have to score the entries if you're just an administrator and you're just looking at, you know, what it looks like. Um, you don't have to score them, um, but you can just be assigned so that you have access to the juror side. Um, and then, you know, as you know, mo multiple folks have different ways of juring, whether that's, you know, individual and um, dispersed juring, where jurors are lo logging in on their own and taking their time to score applications. Maybe you're all meeting in a group, but you're all looking in on separate computers so that you can discuss the applications as you go. Maybe you are doing a projected jury where either using jury buddy or some other method, you're projecting the artwork on you know, the screen, on the wall, and you're having a discussion. Multiple ways that you can score and jury as um, a group in Zap. I just wanna say that, you know, Typically, best practice is that each juror does enter their own score, um, whether that's on paper at first, but then entered into Zap later, or entered in using mobile devices or computers at the jury. Um, whatever the case is, it is recommended, even though it's not always feasible for everyone, um, it is recommended to have every juror enter their own score so that individual scores are tracked for each juror. This can just help for referencing later on, keeping track of who voted what for which applications, um, whatever that may be. But however you decide to set up your jury, just make sure you have all the jurors assigned. Before we get to the actual juror side, I will show you these pre-jury reports that might help you if you are someone that likes to organize everything before you get started. So we have a couple pre-jury reports that allow you to take a look at the breakdown of um, applications. So the first one is the discipline count. So a report in a spreadsheet form that will list the applications or the number of applications in each medium category. So you can take a look um, at you know how many you have in each category in a report form, if that's helpful to you. You can also refer to this table that you're seeing on this page and you know, look at the different categories and how many applications are in each category um, visually here. The other pre-jury report that we have is a um, score sheet. So the score sheets are essentially, um, I'm pretty sure this is, yeah, it's just kind of shows like this. It's kind of like a, um, web page format, but you can download as like a PDF or pr just print it off. And essentially is just giving you the ID number, the statement and discipline category, and allows you can print this out and jurors can then follow along based on the ID number or the name if you're showing the names and they can score um, on pen and paper. So those are two things that might help you, um, but feel free to ignore them if you don't necessarily need them. Um, again, you can view the list of applications here, and this kind of just helps you see, you know, keep track of as the scores come in, it'll be updated, and you can review those there. Um, so, 
you can do that. And um, yeah, so let's get into the jury side and we'll show you what the different views look like. Um, so, you know, in our demonstration setup here, you will have communicated to your jurors that you're ready to start scoring and you'll give them their username and password if applicable um, to log into their account and begin the scoring process. You might have further instructions that you provide them. So just be as detailed as possible. Um, another thing I want to mention as kind of a tip is that um, the ZAP team, the ZAP support team is available Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. to assist jurors with the login process and navigating the site. So we suggest giving them enough time of their scoring process that might overlap with our office hours to ensure that they can reach out to us if they need it. So just be aware of that. You know, if you're only connecting your jury over the weekend, you might um, advise that they try to log in before the weekend so that they can get help if they need it. Logging as a juror, it's the same login user site as administrators, admin.zapplication.org. And then as long as um, the juror logs in with their juror username and password, they'll get to the jury portal. So let's log in here as a juror. So what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to really talk too much about the jury side, but this is just going to give you a preview of what it looks like to the juror and the preview of the different views between monitor and projection that they have um, available to them. So, you know, when they get to the main jury menu, um, they should hopefully see this. If they don't see, you know, the name of the name of the event and the select category option, um, it may have an error message that says they haven't been assigned to any active juries. A couple things might be the case there. Either the jury status is not yet set to in progress. So again, you have to start the jury, make it in progress. Or their juror account might not be assigned to the event like that checkbox that had to be checked next to their account. So one of those two things could be the case. So they might contact us or contact you and you can check those two things to see why they might not be accessing the event. So when they get started, let's just go to all categories. Um, this is a landing page and they'll see a list of the applications. They can, you know, change however many applications are viewed on one page um, if they want to change that. Um, especially if you have hundreds of applications, this is useful to be able to sort your view. Um, and they can just review the list here. And this is where it's going to keep track of the scores. And so you'll see later as we come back to this, um, how this updates. This is the monitor option that I was showing you for the scoring view. So um, monitor gives you a review image option, a score option, and a score remaining option. Let's hop into the review images just to show you. So this is for folks that want to just review the images from the artists before they start scoring. And when I click this, it's actually going to open a pop-up window. Let me bring that into our view. And it will show them in little thumbnails what the artwork looks like. And they can click on the artwork to, re to review that more in depth. And they can zoom in on the images as well. They can also put it into full screen at the bottom here. Um, to take up their entire window. Um, so they can just click through the artwork and booth shots. That was one application, here's the second one, and they can view those images up close as I'm clicking this front arrow a little bit here, you can see. And it just takes them through the artwork, no scoring, no commenting. They can just view the artwork. These are all silly little images that we use for a demo, but um, that's what they have available for the preview option. When they're ready to score, they'll click score. Again, it'll take them to a pop-up window that I'll move into here for you. Looks a lot the same. You know, they are gonna see the thumbnails of the artwork first. Um, I forgot to mention, if you click read more, jurors can read the artist statement that the artist provided. And if they click on the little info icon, they can pull up the sample description and, and the rest of the artwork information for that image. Again, they'll be taken through each of the, when they click next, they'll be taken through each of the artist's uh, images. Then they reach the scorecard page, which looks like this, and they can enter their score. They can provide any comments and they just have to click save and that'll be saved. When I head back to the landing page here, take a quick refresh, you'll see that that score has now saved and I can keep track of that. So that's the process that jurors take. They you know, review all the images and then they can score and click save. Um, just have them 
definitely save their score as they as they go. If they're clicking, you know, here's a score here and they click next, it's when I go back, it's not actually saved. You can see there. So they have to actually click save to save their work. Let's say they um, need to step away and come back. They can close that window. Again, all those scores we just entered are saved. And when they're ready to come back, they can go to score remaining and be taken to the one they left off on. So um, that's what the score remaining option does. So that's the scoring process for monitor scoring view. Um, and this is really good foragers that are logging in separate and need to do their own review um, of, the, of the jury. Let's close that. Now what I'm going to do on the back end um, that you can't see is change it from monitor to projection view. So in those settings that I showed you in the jury view, I'm going to change it to projection just to show you what that looks like. Let me um, refresh this page. For the projection view, you'll see we don't have the preview option. It's just scoring and scoring remaining. That's because this view, when I click score, it takes you to a list of the applications in their scorecard. So you can see it can review multiple applications at once. And because um, this was designed for um, following along with a projected jury in which all of these images might be projected on the wall and I'm looking at it on my laptop and following it along as a juror and I can score and enter my scores um, after the you know in-person discussion or after viewing the images. Um, but this can also be used for jurors who want to log in on their own and score and they can view that. So, um, you know, it's just about personal preference in some ways as well. It's just important to note that this view, if they click on the artwork, at this time, we don't yet have the zoom option for these artwork images, so there's nothing that I can zoom in on this artwork like I could in the other view or put it in full screen, because the idea is that it's already on full screen on the wall. But, um, you know, you don't have to have it projected in order for the juror to use this. Maybe they prefer it this list format and they can view the statement alongside. You still have to get through the um, sorting process. Um, in order to do that, though, I need to make sure I've signed a score to all of these applications. So let me just quickly do that. I'm going to do this swiftly <laughs> and with no particular rhyme or reason to why I'm scoring certain things, except for giving a good range. Um, oops, I didn't say save score after all these. Okay, that's the other thing. You have to save score for them as you go. And it will automatically scroll you down to the next one. And that's kind of nice when it views for um, projected juries. So fast forward in time, the jurors have scored all of the pieces, the applications, and um, they have none remaining. That's good. So you'll want to make sure you instruct jurors to score all of the applications in um, the list so that every application has a score to be used in the next um, process that I'm going to show you. So now we're logged in back as the administrator and we'll go to the next step. So you can see now that I've logged in, all of the scores have been entered for every application. And as an administrator, I can see each individual juror scores because only one juror account has reviewed it. I only see the one, but if these folks had scored as well, I would see them here. So let's move on to the next stage, which is sorting the applications between invited and not invited. Um, again, all the scores are entered and I can move down, scroll down to the bottom of this page to help me with that process. First, I've got some post-jury reports that I can review if I want to take a look at the scores in spreadsheet format. I can do that by individual categories. So I can, you know, just pull a spreadsheet of individual categories or all and download the scores. Or I can download a spreadsheet of just all the scores from every juror for all the applications. And if you like having that in spreadsheet form, you can download that. The spreadsheet might also help you if you need to determine your threshold, or in other words, the cutoff score that should be used when determining how many artists will be eliminated in the round and how many artists will be moved forward or invited. Um, you can click this to download the spreadsheet, look at the list, sort them in score from highest to lowest, and then see, okay, I need, you know, let's say I need I need to eliminate 50 applications. So I'm going to take a look at the bottom, the lowest scored 50 applications, 
whatever the score is that is at that 50 will help me determine my threshold in the next stage. Um, so if you prefer it in spreadsheet format, you can do that. However, the next steps I'm going to show you will also help you determine your threshold based on the scores. So um, let's move into that process. Um, so what I'm going to do to start sorting these folks is go to step two, remove artists in advanced rounds, and I'm going to click on remove artists. This will take me to this page, which I will use to determine the threshold of what artists will be eliminated and what, which artists will be moved forward. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, check mark all of the categories so that I'm doing this all at once versus individual categories, which you can do if you wanted to just do it one at a time. All right, so here in this table, you'll see we have the number of artists in the category, the average score given for all applications in that category, the remove threshold, we'll get to that, the number of artists that will be removed in this stage, the number of artists that will remain, and then I'll show you the percentage of those that will be removed. So the remove threshold is the score that you'll enter to determine who will be eliminated. When you enter a score here, any artist that scored below the remove threshold will be moved to the not invited status. Again, any artist with a score below this number will be moved to not invited. So here it'll tell me the average score and this will help me determine, you know, maybe I just want to bulk remove folks that did not hit the average that was given by the jurors. That's a good way to do that. You can also do the remove threshold in your own number. Let's say instead of, if you remember, we did a one through seven scoring type. Um, instead of keeping it at the average, maybe I'll just say as long as they click, as long as they um, reached a four, they'll be moved to the next round. So any artist below a four will be removed. So again, I'll do that. Um, I have such few applications here to actually really, you know, be able to show you. Um, maybe a real life example of the average, but again, any application that receives below this number will be removed. Um, so again, that's why it's your cutoff. Um, so I'll leave these as is, and I'm going to click update thresholds just to show you that top one. You'll see that someone scored enough to advance the next round. So um, they didn't reach that average score, but I set it down to four so that they can be remaining. So. The threshold can be a little bit tricky, but again, just remember any score below the number will be removed. And we'll leave that actually here. Um, you know, you can set it for different categories. I just want to make sure numbers are good here. I'm actually going to put that back up to five and click update so that it will remove one of those folks. The other thing I'm going to do here is address vendors or food trucks. Some of you might accept vendor applications, in which case you're not collecting images from those vendors, in which case they won't be included in the jury at all because the jury has to have artwork and Zap won't put in vendor applications without pictures or images in the jury. In this case, we did have images for this demo purpose, so I'm just going to make sure that, you know, in this case, I'm going to invite all of the vendors that apply to participate in the event. So I'm not gonna actually sort them. I'm going to uncheck this box here and not take them into consideration at the moment. I'm just click update if needed, but everyone's there. And then the next step is once I've set my removal thresholds, I'm gonna click preview. Now here's where I can just kind of review, make sure, you know, these are the scores that did not make the cut and these folks will be set to not invited. If I wanted to change the status of any of these artists individually, maybe to the waitlist status, or if I do want to just manually keep them in the jury, I'll keep them in the received status. Otherwise, we're going to change everyone to not invited, and I'll click remove artists. It will ask me if I'm ready to remove, and I'll click OK. And that now is um, those six artists were then moved to the not invited status and we'll, we have eight remaining. When you're scoring yes, no, maybe, yes, no, and maybe will actually translate to numerical scores. Um, a yes is equal to a three, a maybe is equal to a two, and a no is equal to a one. So when you get to this page of removing the artists, you'll want to set your threshold to whichever score makes sense in this case. 
So let's say in this round, pretend I didn't do that earlier, but I'm here with a fresh set of artists and I want to move those. I want to keep any artists that received a yes or a maybe, and I only want to eliminate the no's. Because the maybe would be our cutoff score, you know, it's the lowest of those that are allowed through. The maybe is equal to a two, so I would set my removal special to a two. Now do that for all the categories and set it to two because this means that any artist that scored below a maybe, aka below a two, would be remaining, would be, or sorry, would be removed. So any artist scored below a two would be removed. In other words, any artist that scored a one or a no would be eliminated. So that's how you use it for yes, no, maybe, is you convert those to numerical order. Um, that might get tricky when you have multiple jurors, in which case a yes and a maybe would average out to a 2.5. A yes and a no for the same application would average out to a 1.5, in which case you would determine for yourself, okay, I want anyone that just scored, you know, all no's across the board from every juror I want removed. And I would set this um, to, you know, 1.5 so that any artist that scored below a 1.5 or below, you know, that scored an actual one, a true one, would be removed. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if you, you know, another example is if you only want to keep anyone that scored a yes, you would set your threshold to three so that anyone who scored below a yes, which is a three, gets removed. Back to the process here, we've eliminated folks and maybe at this point you're ready to conduct a second round of jurying to further get some new scores and narrow down the selections. Um, once you've done that remove artist process, you're gonna change your current round to two and click save. What that will do is give jurors a fresh scorecard where they can rescore the entries and um, you'll have that second round conducted. Um, so just make sure you change that jury round so that you can keep track of scores from one round to another. In our case, I don't have enough applications to need to further narrow it down. There's currently eight remaining in the jury and I'm ready to invite those folks. I want to invite them to participate. So I'm going to go to our third step, which is finalize the jury selection and click invite artists. Again, I'm going to select all of our categories. In this case, those food truck folks get to stay because I want to actually move them to invited and we'll um, take a look here. So again, you have the same table. However, in this case, when it's inviting folks, you can have the invite threshold and you'll be able to see who will be invited and who will be left behind in the jury. In the invite threshold, this is the opposite from the other one, where any application scored above the invite threshold will be um, moved to invited, will be invited to, the, to participate. Um, the default for this site, uh, stage here is zero, because I'm basically saying I want everyone that's remaining to move forward, so I want anyone that scored above a zero to move forward. Um, so that's why it's at zero. You only want to update this if you really wanted to only invite certain people, um, but still leave some folks behind in the jury. But that's not standard workflow, so I'm not going to go over that. Um, just leave everything at zero and you'll be good to go. So we'll click preview. I'll be able to just, you know, quickly review the scores again for these folks. Um, again, if I wanted to manually update anyone to have wait list or some other statuses here, I can. But for this case, I want to move all eight to invited. So I'll click invite artists and there we go. Now I have zero applications being judged. That's because everyone is in the either the invited or not invited status or the exempt status. No one is left in the received status. If you do see some applications after you do that process still being judged, if this number is not zero here and you still see some applications um, in this in the table, that means they did not receive a score in the current round and they you know, didn't have a score to take into account during that sorting process. So you'll need to determine with your jurors whether or not that artist was invited or not. Um, that's another way, reason why I make sure you have folks score every single application so that every application is accounted for. Let's head into advanced management just to show you what I, you know, did there. We have our invited um, artist eight and our not invited artist six. I've got those exempt from jury folks. Maybe now is the time where I'm ready to put them in invited just so that they can be with the rest of the group. And there you go. 
Okay. One quick thing before we move forward is just to let you know that in those last two steps where I was changing um, artists to different statuses using those thresholds, um, if I messed up, that's okay. What I can do is just move folks back to the received status. I could, um, you know, go to the invited status, move everyone back to received, move everyone from not invited back to received, and do that sorting process again. Maybe I messed up the numbers and I could do that. Um, Things can be reversed, so it's not a big deal, and you can just put folks into received and do it again. If you're in later stage rounds, maybe you're in round two when you messed up, that's okay too. You can put everyone in received. Do your round two updates as you would. Um, any folks that were eliminated in round one will not receive a score in round two because they weren't there, and you can manually move them back after the process. So um, all of that is just to say don't be concerned if something happened and you messed up. Um, you can always revert folks to received to do it again. And there's a question in the chat. How do we make sure artists do not see their status till it is time to be notified? Great question. That it goes to our next um, final section of this webinar, which is communicating those results. So back in the jury page, as long as you have the hide current artist status setting set to yes, artists will not see that they've been invited or not invited until you're ready to notify them. Zap does not automatically notify artists of any jury results. That's a process that you do. And um, when you change this to no, that's the only way that artists can see the status on their end is when you change the jury status to complete and click hide artist status no. When you save that, artists will then be able to see whether or not they've been invited when they log into Zap. Um, so the, that's why we recommend the first process. Don't change those yet. First, you'll go to events communication and you'll notify maybe you're not invited artists vote first and you'll email them one email to let them know the results are ready. And then um, you'll also email your invited batch of artists with one email here. I don't have enough time to go through the events communication section as much as I would like to, so keep in touch for future webinars about that. Um, but once you notify artists, then you can head to the jury administration page and change it to complete and hide current status to no, and then save that, and that will complete the you know back end settings for your jury. Um, again, artists will not be notified until you notify them. My last tip that I have for you is, you know, when you're communicating um, status results to artists, um, you can also, one thing you can do, or let's just say the not invited folks, one thing you can do is insert the juror scores and comments um, into the um, email itself to share any feedback or scores. It's not something everyone prefers to do, but it's a nice way to make sure artists are, you know, receiving the feedback and, um, you know, they can see those anonymous scores. Um, again, if you choose to share that with them. This wraps up our webinar for how to conduct a seamless jury in Zap. If you have any questions specific to your event or feedback for our team, please email us at zaphelp at westaf.org. Don't forget our help center exists too. So if you click the help tab in the Zap dashboard, you can get to our help center that has all of this information. Thanks for joining me and I hope to see you at our next webinar. Bye.